Cool. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, good. It's cool with you. I record this call. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to ask if I could do the same. Sweet. Please do. All right. Cool. Awesome. So, uh, Carl, tell me a little bit about yourself, what you got going on, and um, see how I can help you. Yeah. Um, so, I am, so currently, I'm really just like wanting to um, eventually at some point start my own uh, production company. And right now, I'm really just looking to gain experience and I'm um, thinking of ways to kind of build a portfolio at this point. Um, like I've, right now I've also been volunteering at a TV uh, station, like a nonprofit TV station and kind of helping out with um, doing some camera work there uh, predominantly. And besides that, it's really just been um, kind of doing like little informational interviews like this. And just wanting to really get to know um, like I, I should say get a better idea of what it's like to just like run a, you know production company or like any kind of small business so that's kind of where I'm at I've been pretty much just wanting to like find like find out what's the sort of beginning steps um, of um. starting it so do you, so how much shooting do you know? Like, do you actually go out and shoot and stuff like that? So just so I can cover the basics of. Like when you say going out, do you mean just going out for fun or like, as in someone's just. I mean, asking? both like, so like if you needed to go out and shoot an interview or promo video, like how comfortable are you doing that? Just so I know where to start guiding yeah. like a baseline, uh, I guess. Yeah, so right now I probably would feel comfortable shooting a um, shooting a interview more so more so than a promo video. Okay. Um, just in terms of like gear that I have uh, right now, I really just have like the most basic of gear, <laughs> uh, you know, camera and like one microphone. Um, no lights. Uh, yeah, like no lights. Okay. Um, yeah, just like right now, that's pretty much all that I have. Um, I mean, I was planning on getting more gear, but with COVID and, you know, yeah. uh, making or things a little If you buy more. anything next, buy lights. I think light lights. is, yeah, it's like for a really long time, I was actually shooting with this, it's like a D5300. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, it's not a crazy camera, but having like a light, it's, it makes yeah. such a huge difference. Um, like my first two years of business, I was using that camera. And I was going against people shooting with like cinema cameras and A7 cameras, but it comes mm -hmm. down to it for most business needs and stuff like that. I think lighting is where you can really make your image pop, even if like you can even shoot it with the cell phone. But okay. Yeah. Um, um, I was going to ask you what type of lights are you getting? Like, because I know I've read about the for interview lighting, like the three point lighting, sort of. I don't know if that's. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the most important thing when you're starting out with lighting is you need to have at least two of the same lights. Um, unless you're getting, so unless you're getting a really good light, like if you're going to buy like an Aperture 120, um, I have the first generation 120. Um, I think right now they probably go for around like five to 600 bucks. And it's a pretty good light. I mean, I think it's a great, it's a great key light to have. But what I've been using a lot lately are the, they're called like Vovitech lights. They're like two light panels. I like them because they're super run and gun. Like for me to like go out and set up a dome and, and having like the Actual 120 and the C stand, it's a lot sometimes. And I'm really now, especially with being COVID, I want to be in and out of shoots. So I use these light panels because they're so portable. But when I first started, I had like these newer lights. Um, I think I paid like 120 bucks for two of them. And uh, they were great. And then I used like another little newer thing for like a backlighting type thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's one of those things of like you learning lighting is always to me, like if I learned lighting three years ago, I think it would help me a lot, do a lot of different things uh, differently because lighting is such, it's one of those things that doesn't matter where you go. If you can learn how to light something, it doesn't matter what camera you're shooting with, you can make something look really great. 
But if you start off with small lights and you're figuring out like, you know, what works for you. It's so like with me, I have like a little overhead. I don't know if I can do this. So I have like a little overhead light here with the oh, dome. Okay. And it's like yeah. through a seat stand, which is like, you know, it's just kind of a lot set up in, in the sense of like, I was going to shoot. But like, I know that, you know, with the light outside, I put my blinds on and I pretty much try to control the light and I have a little bit of, of a balance happening versus like, yeah. if I turn this light off, it gets a little bit darker, you know, it's not as flattering. So like little things like that about understanding lighting is one of those things. And this light I'm using here is like a, I think it's called like a Godex 60 or something like that. Like it wasn't, how did you go put Amazon? it's nothing crazy and, and now too like there's so many good light companies out there the biggest thing is you know find a light that's going to be at least quiet because i've seen other lights in the market that uh they're kind of like like you have a fan noise or something like that yeah so this light here was 134 dollars you can get one okay. with the dome for like 200 bucks so like if i'm just starting now you know what I mean? Like that's probably where I would go. Then I'll get some sort of light panel to kind of do like some fill in stuff. But as you progress, you start to learn that you need stronger lights and things like that. But for you just starting out and just hopping in, um, it's one of those things that I'll be like, you probably should invest your money other places. Other thing is, I guess what a lot of people don't think about when starting a video production company is, do you want to run a video production company or do you want to work within inside of the video production company? Cause I'm at the phase now for myself that like, I rather hire people that have the lights to have the gear and I'm doing, you know, client management. I'm doing the direct thing. I want to get into the More shoes. Business so, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Because okay. like, you know, for you, if you could, if you hone down on actually doing the business side of the video production and you can hire the people that have all these different things, you all that money that i put into buying all this gear that i barely use now i could have influxed that into my business into running ads developing systems hiring more people but you know i got started in video production because i really wanted i, I loved shooting videos and that was kind of a like a passion for me and it, that you know ended up turning into a business but it comes down for you just starting out you gotta ask yourself that like you know what what is it about the video production that i like so you just have sort of an idea of like hey what kind of moves do i need to make do i really need to buy this stuff or if i'm charging enough or if i know someone can i just hire them to be able to help me in these shoots so i could be the producer like if you're working on a tv station you're probably really good at interviewing people that's a skill that a lot of videographers don't have i work with a lot of people that you know when it comes down to like having a conversation with someone and asking them questions that are gonna come out to great video content. It's a skill that not a lot of people have. So it's just like something to think about. Yeah. Um, so like when you, um, when you were first starting out, how did you go about just like creating a portfolio? Did you find like a certain niche and was just kind of building it from there or? When I first started out, I would shoot anything and everything. If it moved, I would shoot it. Um, you know, the way that I kind of got started, it's one of those things that video has always kind of been around um, for me, but it was something that never like followed my passion with this. So I think I got like the GoPro Hero 2 is like my first GoPro that I got. And I won it at work at a Christmas party. That's for making like really little stupid videos with like super yeah. saturated <laughs> images and stuff like that. And then, um, like, I moved to Peru for a little bit. And then I was using the GoPro to make videos here and there. And it wasn't until I moved to New York City, I was working for a family, and uh, they were pretty wealthy. And they literally just had cameras laying around the house all the time. And, uh, <laughs> like, on downtime, I would pick up the camera. Like, I'd take photos of the kids. I'd take photos of the cars. And just start shooting everything. I ended up saving enough money. And then I literally bought this camera here. Um, and uh and then i pretty much started shooting everything and at that time i was working catering i was doing catering bartending and like babysitting and stuff like that yeah. so a lot of the catering people that i worked with they were like it was like a high-end model fashion catering company so a lot of them needed stuff for their portfolios so i just started shooting with them then i started doing behind the scenes for photo shoots that they were doing and then uh one of the restaurants i worked at 
I offered to do them a free video, um, which that restaurant was called Juliet's, and I'll link that up here. I never know which side it is with the camera, but it'd be linked, I'll link it up here when we post it. I'll, I'll send it to you. But I told oh. him, I was like, hey, I was like, hey, I'm getting into video production. I want to shoot a video for you guys. What do you guys think if I like charge you like a hundred bucks for a video plus a hundred dollar gift card to the restaurant? They're like, deal, like fucking like yes. no brainer for them. So, you know, I looked at a bunch of different videos and made a little storyboard and I went out and I shot it. And then I kept doing like more behind the scenes stuff. And then a girlfriend of mine at the time, she was working for a publication um, that they were doing like um, articles and stuff like that. And I was just like, yo, if you're doing these articles, interviewing these celebrities, uh, why don't we do videos like to go along with the content of that? This was like, you know, 20... 14 2015 and um you know we start shooting videos for these articles and it was cool because i got to work with like some like high level celebrities but also got to build my portfolio but still at this point you know i was only charging like 200 dollars for a video um so like i just kept shooting more of that stuff and that's where i thought my niche was gonna be at and it wasn't until i moved back to south florida that i really like I had to pivot and I started shooting business stuff because like down here, the market for me didn't have fashion stuff. It wasn't these same, same articles that, you know, people were doing in New York or the same type of events. A lot of people I reached out to, they're like, we have an intern or we have somebody that does video. We don't need video. So I was like, okay, I'm in South Florida. What is there a lot of here? Well, who can I talk to? I was like, oh shit, there's tons of small businesses. At this time when I moved, back to south florida it was like 2016 i was like no one's really doing video here it's either like thirty thousand dollar productions or like you know 200 500 videos there's no one in between that so that's what's like, okay let me start servicing some of these businesses mm -hmm. and it's kind of the same thing you know when i first got here i was showing people my portfolio and they're like hey you got a lot of like you got behind the scenes stuff and fashion stuff like you know i'm a mechanic or a dentist he's like like that doesn't relate to me. Like, you know, show me some business stuff. So like, okay, I got to prove to these okay. people that I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So exact same thing. I started hitting up businesses like, yo, can I shoot a free video for you? The first free video I did when I got back home was my barber. Um, Cause the way I saw it, I was like, he's a barber. He just, he opened up like this guy's been cutting my hair for like 15 years, but I was like, okay, he's opening up his own barber shop. A lot of people go to the barber shop. So in this sense, Maybe if he had like, you know, a screen or a TV that he could show the video there, people are like, oh, who shot your video? I was just thinking about the opportunity. It's like, well, let me do this free video for him. That was like my first free business video that I did. Yeah. Then when I got that one, I did one for a dentist. I pretty much kind of pitched the dentist on the exact same thing. And that's like my first two business videos that I had that I started using that to leverage like getting corporate production work. Yeah, so have you found that like word of mouth has really helped? Oh, for your sure. Business grow? Like is, at least in the beginning, at least that's like what has caused like the growth to happen? I think honestly, today word of mouth is probably bigger for me than what it was back then because when you're first starting out, you don't really have a word of mouth, right? Because like people either know you, you know, like your friends and family know you that like, you know, like, hey, you know, my mom, like, oh, my son does video and she'll literally pitch me to everybody to do video, but like not necessarily everyone was who I wanted to work with. So the word of mouth that you get when you first started now is like, hey, you need a video guy and it's somebody that's really cheap. Uh, but now I think when you're starting out, you need to be more proactive about reaching out to people because no one knows that you exist. And people that do know you exist, you know, they know that you're new or they're, like I said, they're, they're not gonna wanna pay you a lot. So you gotta be super proactive and aggressive when you're first starting out. And then you start building that brand and those relationships. Like now I'll get stuff from people that are like, you know, I've been working with for a year, for a year or two, and they, you know, are working with a new business and they saw their video. They're like, hey, you know, so-and-so at this company, I saw the video you did for them, well, how much your video is like, what's the process? So like the, I think that's where it's been most, most effective. And then also if you're just starting out is SEO. Like SEO on our website is probably how we got some of our biggest clients.
SEO? SEO. So it's like search engine optimization. And it's like, it sounds really complicated, but honestly, it's one of those things, if you're just starting out and you're going to build a website, it's one of those things that to us made us really valuable to our clients. Because like when you learn SEO for your own personal website, you know SEO for any website. It's literally like you're learning to, you're learning the structure of what Google looks for in a website. So like stuff that we do when we reach out to clients to be like, Hey, I saw that your website, you didn't have like a SSL code or, Hey, I saw that you didn't have this updated. That's a really easy fix. So they're like, Oh shit. So you know a little bit more because like you need to position yourself as more than just a videographer. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, cause like that day when you're just that person that shows up to shoot videos is gone. Like, no one wants just a videographer. Business owners need to solve business problems. So you need to be able to solve those, that with business strategies. My strategies just come based on videos. So learning all those things are all things that just make you more of a well-rounded person. It makes you stand out versus your competition. Do you find it's more you're providing video and a little bit of like marketing services as well these plans exactly so it's more of a strategy so like you know if you were talking you're like hey you know uh, i'm trying to get more clients i'm like okay well, how well, why are you trying to get more clients i'm like well sales are down da, 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 da. i'm like all right cool well, what else are you doing for marketing well we tried pay-per-click and we did this and that so I'm like so like i want to start dissecting the things um and this gets a little bit like more high level um but yeah it's like because here's the thing i've been in a situation where i made a video for a client and then i didn't have a strategy in place or a client didn't know what to do with that video and i made a cool video and i gave it to them and they uploaded it and they're like hey i follow up like two weeks how's the video doing it's not doing that great i don't think the video worked they're like oh shit that customers probably not going to want to work with you again because you made a video for them and they're saying it didn't work. So my problem was I wasn't asking like, Hey, what is the goal of this video? So like, that's like literally one of the first things I want to know because like, I want to make sure when we shoot this video, it's going to help you reach the goal or get the result that you're looking for. So, you know, if a client's telling me that like, Hey, we're getting a lot of leads. We're having a lot of problems closing them. I'm like, okay, well, maybe let's do a testimonial video. Let's get, you know, one of your customers on camera. So when you are throughout the sales process, mm-hmm. you have a testimonial video that you can send out to everybody. Or if you're in a situation, like we're not getting enough leads. Oh, so we need to do a brand awareness video. Let's get people talking about you. You know what I mean? So it's like having a better understanding of how that video is going to help them. And I think that's where you can bring a lot of value to people. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah like I've got like a ton of questions here. <laughs> Um, so like when you're, you know, like, well, how do you go about doing your negotiations? Like if someone comes to you like, oh, you know, I only have like this sort of budget or I want to do all these different things. Like how you do you go do a role play? Sure. Okay. <laughs> you want to be the client or you want me to be the client? Um, you know, I'll be the client. Yeah, be the difficult one. <laughs> Um, so oh, you, okay, difficult one. Yeah, if you want me, be, be whatever client you want. I, I'm getting rusty, so maybe you put me <laughs> in practice. Um, okay. Um, all right, so, Rodrigo, thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> um, so, we're struggling with our sales. Uh, they've gone down exponentially over the past couple of years, and we've been looking into different things, uh, different marketing uh, tools and we found that video might be the best option for us. So we kind of have an idea that we would want to do sort of a, it's a mini documentary style. Oh, nice. Video. Okay. Um, just kind of getting that more human story of our products um, out there to you know, show that we're you know a great company and that we actually care for okay. uh, our clients and the work that we do. Got it. So I have a couple questions for you. Okay. Um, have you guys done video in the past? Uh, no. Uh, predominantly, we've mostly been recently. We've been focusing all our all of our efforts on like more social media. Okay. So like using posting stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Like posting, um, maybe like Got little it. stories about clients um, that we have. 
uh, like maybe Instagram or Facebook, mm -hmm. along those lines, and word of mouth predominantly. Got it. And why do you think that your sales have really been going down? I think right now that the market is um, oversaturated. And so we've been, right now we've been looking for ways to sort of stand out. Uh, I think a lot of companies are using social media right now and uh, to promote their business. So we are definitely wanting to kind of cut above that and uh, connect with people. Got it. And uh, the way you're going to be connecting with them, are you looking to do something like what, what's going to be your distribution with this mini doc? Okay. Well, um, it's something we definitely want to have on our website okay. uh, for sure. And then maybe having it um, also through social media as well, like maybe little clips of it here or there. So you're going to need more videos than just a mini doc. Yes. Okay. I'm just taking some notes here. Cool. Um, now this mini doc, what are you thinking? Like a couple of days shooting? Like, are we talking like 30 minute documentary? What do you have in mind? Yeah, we were thinking something more along the lines of maybe like shorter documentaries. So something like under 10 minutes, eight, 10 minutes, something uh, shorter. And then maybe having a small sit down um, interview style with some of our employees that are, <clears throat> excuse me, that are more uh, connected with the clients, mm -hmm. with our customers, I should say, uh, with our customers. Um, and then kind of detailing and showing some like, I guess, B-roll footage of what they do and how they are interacting with the customers and showing that human connection. Awesome. I mean, I'm loving all these ideas. I'm getting super excited about this. I'm having all these different visions of what we could do. And uh, I just don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. Um, what's your budget for this project? So I believe we, we probably would want at least, probably maybe like three videos in total just to highlight mm -hmm. um, different sections of the company. Yeah. Um, so a total budget, $5,000. Okay. Um, so I have to $10,000 somewhere in that range. Okay. Well, I mean, so I'll tell you what, normally for something that we're just talking about now, it would fall around the $10,000 mark. Okay. That's kind of us just delivering that mini doc series. This doesn't include any of the additional social media content that we talked about. Okay. Um, now this really would be between that, you know, fifteen and ten thousand dollar range for everything that we talked about. And I know you said your budget is between five and ten. Uh, so there are different pricing options that we can provide you. I just want to make sure that if I give you something at that fifteen thousand dollar mark, is that like completely out of your budget, or just right now where we're at? Um, I think that is something that we can definitely work with. Okay. Um, something in that ball ballpark would be fine, but. You know, we would also want the option, like, if we can potentially lower the cost, that would be great. But if that's, you know, the best that we can get, yeah. in terms of quality and everything in scope, then the 15000 would be fine. Yeah, so what I'll do, uh, when we wrap up this call, I'll put something together or talk to my team, and I'll provide you three pricing options, one at 15000 one at ten, and one at five. And it's just going to be the deliverables are pretty much are going to be the things that, that change there. How's that sound? That sounds wonderful. Okay, this awesome. Great. You're supposed to be hard on me. This is easy. <laughs> what? I didn't know. <laughs> They're going to be like 500 bucks. Um, so I think the biggest thing when it comes to <laughs> negotiation that I tell people is if you're talking to the business owner, you want to ask about money right away. Like, okay. it'd be like, hey, um, so like, I'm like, that's what you're trying to find out. What kind of video are you trying to make? You'd be like, hey, I'm trying to do a commercial. Or like trying to do a promo video. Like, hey, normally normally our commercials are between like five to three thousand dollars. Is that within your range? And they'd be like, Oh no, that's too much. We're like, okay, well then what what is the range that works for you? Just so I know. And they'd be like, Well, I was thinking like two thousand. I'm like, like, okay, I could possibly do something for two thousand dollars, but you know, we're gonna have to reduce the scope of it. Is that gonna work with you? And they'd be like, No, like, you know, I mean that's where the negotiation comes together. But 
you know, in a sense, just talking to you, it sounded like you're part of a bigger organization, which you're probably, you know, a marketing director or a marketing coordinator. In those situations, I want to like, I want to like ask you all these different questions. I want to ask about like the project, the distribution, you know, I ask like, you know, what is a, you know, a home run look like for you? Because I know that there's going to be a bigger budget involved with this, but it, those are just kind of things that come, you know, with a little bit more of a practice. But I think those are the two most important things are if you're talking to a business owner, talk about money right away. Because the last thing I want to do is like, we kept talking about this. So like, you know, you're like mini doc series, I go to websites, social media videos under 10 minutes. We're talking about the whole production, you know, get a 30 minute call. And you're like, yeah, we're thinking like a thousand bucks. And we're like, thousand dollars like you know you can't do all of that for a thousand dollars you just spend all this time so you know just going off that i know that i got a lot of information out of you so now i'm like hey i'm just getting super excited my mind's you know starting to run like i don't want to you know i'm like what, what what are we working with here you know what i mean like try to ground mm -hmm. everything together yeah. But it just comes like a little bit of practice. Um, you know, I used to do this with my sister a lot. We literally just sit here and try to be like a like a hard client on, on each other, just to like work on that because all it is is practice. And you know, the more practice you get into saying like, you know, I remember the first time I told a client eighteen hundred dollars for a video. I was like, yo, what the fuck? I said eighteen hundred dollars for a video. Like that's fucking crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> but it's one of those things until I said it. And then the biggest one I've ever had to tell, I told a client $15,000 for one video. And I was just like, yo, I was going to say like 12. And then my sister was like, tell them 15. I was like, I'm afraid we're going to lose it. And I was like, 15,000. And they were like, all right, cool. And I was like, I probably could have charged more. But <laughs> one of those things, like you just got to get used to saying your numbers and just being very confident on them. Um, so. So when you initially were starting out and you know you were, you were doing the videography, were you just generally charging a flat fee? Like, you know, oh, I'll, I'll do, you know, the shoot the video, the editing and um, anything else for like $400 or something like that when you were first starting out. So when I first, so when I first was starting out, I used to charge $25 an hour for me to come out and shoot $25 an hour to edit. But that was like, I didn't know better. Right. Because like, for me, I never worked in a marketing agency. I never worked for somebody in the industry. I literally left from working at a restaurant and doing like catering and all these different odd jobs in New York. to like, I've had to figure it out. I was like, okay, what do I need to charge? It's like my catering job paid me $50 an hour to go and cater. And I was like, I said, no, I lied. It was 20 so 150. Yeah. So my catering job paid me $25 an hour to cater. So I was like, if I can make $25 an hour to shoot video, I can quit my catering job. So that's where I started. Okay. So if I'm working five hours, making 125 bucks, like if I could do this, you know, I mean, that's how my math went. And eventually I'm like, okay, I need to start charging more. And it wasn't, until like I got burned with a couple projects that um, actually those projects that I did for like $200, one of them I literally spent like 40 hours on it. And I like sent the client the invoice and they're like, yeah, we're not paying you that. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's just like, she's like, yeah, she's like, we have a flat rate for 200 bucks. So I was like, what? I was like, cause like I'm over here putting like sweat and love into this thing. And they're like, yeah, we're not paying more than $200. So I was like, all right, cool. So that's when I started changing stuff and then I started using contracts. So right now, if like if you came to me with a project, I'll give you a flat rate on it. But on my contract, it would say like, hey, you're gonna get three mini doc videos between seven and 10 minutes long. It's gonna be delivered in high definition. It's gonna include three rounds of revision, music licensing, basic, you know, motion graphics, you know, one day of shooting and, you know, I pretty much just lay it out and I'm like anything extra on that it's additional charges. So yeah. like that, there's no like questions when a client's like, Hey, fourth round of revision, like already on the second round of revision, I let them know like, Hey, next round is the last round of revision. So if you guys need additional stuff, she's going to let you guys know now, you know, take your time, make all the notes that you need. But if you go another round of revisions, it's $60 an hour for all the editing. Um, so just keep in mind, just having those conversations with them. But to me, having a flat rate 
is probably the best way, but I think it's those things that, um, you know, you, I guess, Chris, you follow Chris though, you know who the future is? It sounds vaguely familiar. I don't think so. Though. I highly, if you're just starting out, go follow the future on YouTube. I've learned so okay. much from Chris. Um, but like you scaff scaffolding, like you got to go up, right? So you start off with hourly pricing, then you move to flat rate pricing, and then you move into value based pricing. So like that gig that I got, it was like $15,000. It was a value based pricing the way I priced them because it was a huge corporation. They needed a video done in two days and it's for a very high profile client. So like those things into that equation, allowed me to be able to charge them $15,000 for a video. If it was, you know, a mom and pop shop or something like that and try to get like that value-based pricing, it doesn't really work. So for the most part, a lot of what we do is based on a flat rate. Okay. Yeah, so for like the smaller companies, you're more inclined to do an hourly uh, rate. So my hourly rate, so I'll give them a flat rate, but that flat rate is based on an hourly equation, right? So my day rate for like from, for a client to get out to a client hiring me to just go out and shoot for the eight hours is $1,800 for the day. So when I price them for a video, I already know that it's either going to be a half day shoot, which is going to be $900 for hours of shooting, or it's going to be $1,800 for a full day shoot. So now based on, you know, I know that for me to edit a video, like normally speaking, one minute video takes me four hours to put something together like that. Now, multiple rounds of revisions. So you're talking about, you know, three more rounds of revisions. I'm gonna add eight more hour to those four. So now I'm sitting at 12 hours. So now I'm you know, calculating those 12 hours into, and like I made a little spreadsheet with this and now I can literally just plug in the stuff and it does um, like the math for me. So it's like 600 bucks for, I called it $50 an hour, plus, you know, my 1800 is $2,400 for me to go out like a one day. So one day shoot, two minute video is going to be, that's where my cost is, right? So this is my cost. Now the other thing you got to do is add your profit. So I'll probably tell a client for something like this, it'll be between, i be like, hey, based on what we discussed, for me to come out and shoot a profile business video for you, it'll be between $3,000 and $2,600. You know, because here's the thing, $3,000 is a lot. I have a little bit of wiggle room, right? So I can come to, hey, this 28 work, this 26 work. So like that, even if it comes at 26, there's a profit margin of 200 bucks, right? And that's how you start really making money as a, like a, a production company because I used to never include profit until my quotes. And I was always, you know, paycheck to paycheck, hustling for my next $200 video because like you as yourself, like I pay myself 500 bucks a week. Like, you know, and I'm working freaking 12 hour days, 10 hour days, but I still pay myself 500 bucks a week and I keep putting all my money back into my business. But if I wasn't adding profit into that, it's really hard for you to grow your business and hire other people. So that's just something that, you know, understand what your base rate fee is and then add a little, add 15% under, add 10% under. Cause like when you're just starting now, like you're pretty much, you know, you're taking in all the money for the most part. But the sooner you get in the habit of charging a profit into everything that you're doing, um, you know, it just makes it better. Because the other things you got to think about, like you, you are charging a client for the production and the editing. But what about your software to edit the stuff? What about the Dropbox that you make to delivering the files easier for them? So as somewhere along that equation, you need to be able to charge a client for those things. And that's how, you know, in the sense, I justify that. But, you know, I normally don't justify, like I wouldn't show my client all those things. I'll just tell them, right. yes. be like, yes. hey, it's going to be $2,800. You're going to get a two minute video, one day of shooting, three rounds of revisions. I don't tell them what gear I'm bringing, unless they need like a teleprompter and stuff like that. I'll be like, hey, we're included a teleprompter on this. But like, I don't, I used to do like, 
you're gonna get a 50 millimeter lens, a 24 to 70, you're gonna get a two Sony A days, you're gonna get an aperture, and then they'll be like, well, I don't need the aperture, I don't need that lens, I'm, and I'm like, okay, I'll take that off, and I'm like, I show up to the job, I'm like, fuck, now I'm making my job harder because I didn't bring these things because because the client didn't pay for it. I'm like, no, if I was like, fuck that, like I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I'll even if you they're not gonna pay what I'm asking, what I'm asking them, I'm still gonna make like if you're paying me for a three thousand dollar video, my goal is to produce you a five thousand dollar video because no one knows that that video I produced for three thousand dollars is three thousand dollars. I want to be able to leverage that video to show the next person that I could make a five thousand dollar video. Okay, um, so I have a bunch of questions. Um, so, like, what's some, what's something that you wish that you knew? Um, that like something that you know now that you wish you knew when you initially started your company. Oh, uh, your camera doesn't matter. For when you're getting started, your camera doesn't matter. Um, and contracts are huge huge i went i was working for this other lady um i pretty much lost five thousand dollars off to this lady she wrote me bad checks um i was working with the crew i paid out a bunch of people uh weekend goes by bank account says checks uh didn't have funds in them but all the money i paid to the other people came out of my account uh, I went to court, uh, won the court case. She didn't show up for the court case. So I had to go like chase her down, file a lien against her. Uh, still to this day, never got that money. So the whole thing of like, I didn't have a contract with her. I gave her the footage before like she paid me because you know, like this, I was literally at this lady's house for Thanksgiving, like two days before she wrote me this bad check, right? So it was one of those things of like, you know, I try to be a, a good guy, but like I got burned pretty bad. And after that, I was like, yo, no contract. I was like, we're not doing business. If you haven't paid, you're not getting your video files. And that varies, right? Like I have a client that we work with all the time and like working with their accounting just takes a little bit longer, but we've done five or six yeah. projects. You know what I mean? So like there is a relationship but with new people yeah. is 50% to start. If you can't pay the fifty percent, like I'm not starting. I don't care if you sign the contract. If I don't have money, I'm not starting. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing that, like, you don't want to get burned, man. Like that, like that was stressful. Like yeah, having to go, so like, big. yo, I was like <laughs> having to print every single email, make a, had to make three copies of every single email, yeah. make a copy of every text message, mm -hmm. lay it out. And like, I spent a lot of time putting this together. And I, when I got to court, the judge was like, oh, she didn't show up. She was like, you won the case. I'm like, well, what about like all this stuff? What about, what about like, my money? <laughs> they're like, yeah, you can file a lien. I was like, file a lien. I was like, I'm already oh, broke. Like, I don't have money to go file a lien and like do all these different things. So I think that's probably the biggest thing. Oh, and then um, find people to work with. I think like the biggest thing I struggle, where are you based out of? Uh, I'm in Minneapolis. Okay, cool. Oh, my buddy, uh, Rob lives up there. Oh, cool. Um, I don't know where Minneapolis is. Where is it? I think he's Minnesota. It, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's up there. He's actually one of my really good friends. I started shooting with him a long time ago. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, like go shoot with people, find people to shoot with and collab with and grow. Because I think one of the biggest things that helped me grow was somebody else that reached out to me locally. And he was doing wedding stuff. He saw one of the videos I did for a business and he's like, tracked them down. Then he tracked me down through them. And he likes like, yo, I want to buy you lunch. I want to pick your brain. And then me and him start working together. So in a sense, like there's some shoots that I wasn't making a lot of money. He would be like, yo, it's just like, you know, cover my basics. I'll help you in your shoot. When he had a shoot, I returned that back to him. So at that point, like, you know, we were, we, we weren't both like making huge amounts of money we were both making enough that we were both surviving and growing our business so in that sense like i was helping him allow this business and we got to do some like really cool stuff like we got to do some nfl stuff this past year we went to the super bowl Ooh. um we got into like it was one of those things of just like being good to other people and helping other people grow i think that's probably like something essential nice yeah that's awesome yeah um you also mentioned that you said the camera doesn't matter. So is it 
like the type of camera or is it just like the cost of the camera so um, or just I mean, in general yeah so like if i had to go out today and shoot something with this camera like i could do it and feel very confident with it the most important part of your camera is going to be getting a good lens um because like if i could throw a 50 millimeter 1.8 on this thing and i have a good lighting setup like the only, so the main reason i stopped shooting with this camera was because we started doing commercial work because for the most part a lot of my work was talking heads so the autofocus on this camera this camera is like eight years old so like the autofocus would be like <laughs> like you'd literally hear it trying to focus yeah, yeah, yeah so for interviews it's fine but when we started doing commercials and people were moving and stuff like that like i was struggling to like keep focus and not doing all those things Mm -hmm. But having like a good lens for your camera, because like you can get a decent camera for like you know six hundred, eight hundred bucks now, but you got yeah. a good lens. So like spending the money on the lens, I think it's super essential, and then just getting a good lighting kit. Okay. And what about sound? Like, because um, I have a, I guess just a video mic. Uh huh. Um. But I know, like, I've been doing some research, and a lot of people have been using, um, or I've seen people use, like, the Zoom, like, the recorders. Yep. Um, and, like, lavalier mics. And so I'm assuming if, like, I were just, like, do, doing interviews, the lavaliers would probably work fine for that. So um, that varies. And, like, you got to think about the kind of work that you're doing. So, like, I use, if I'm doing just a one person interview for like a corporate company what i normally do is i'll have like a boom mic over them and then i'll do like a backup lav mic that they can't see um that's i mean that's the other, i guess that's the other big thing that i learned and it, it all comes down to like what type of content that you're shooting because like for us now that we're doing a lot of commercial work for like actually tv stuff like audio is something that like we barely use audio for those commercials. But when you are doing these small business talking head stuff, audio is huge. So having a backup audio source, so like having your boom mic is great, but then you got to have a second, you know, audio so, uh, like source because like there's for you to tell your client like, hey, we forgot to hit record on something or you didn't miss that. And let's say they got talent involved to come in and do all those different things. It's not a good look. And I've had some like instances that like having the backup audio literally saved though. Like it's always like that one thing that the client said that was like fucking perfect. That like that was like the one clip we didn't get of audio. Uh, so having backup like has saved me twice, like no other thing. Um, but the not the Zoom. Um, Rode has this Rode like uh, Rode mic goes. Um, that's yeah. really my go-to mic right now for like run and gun interview stuff. The only problem with them is that you can only have one mic hooked up to the receiver. So if you're doing a two-person interview, it gets a little bit more tricky. But I mean, other than that, like I still use my Rode. Uh, not the, I use the Rode shotgun mic. And the biggest thing with audio, because the mics are good, is that you got to have the audio close to the person so you know in the situation that you're doing an interview you don't have a loud mic i think the most important part is to get that boom mic super close to the person using like either like a c stand or i started off using um like uh a mic you know like the microphone stands they have in church and stuff like oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. i was using those and like putting it like underneath the, the camera frame so like they couldn't see it but like shooting oh, it on the chest okay, and i yeah. just had a really long cord like a uh an aux cable cord get the right one because i also got like the wrong aux cord that like you have a little bit of static and stuff so when, when you are getting new gear and you're trying shit out just try it at home. Do not wait for the shoot to try it. That's something else I learned like the, yeah. the, the wrong way <laughs> back in the day. But make sure that it works, you know, before the actual shoot. Don't wait for the day of shoot to try out new gear. Um, but there are all those, those little things where I think it's all, all those things come with you figuring out what kind of content that you're shooting, but also relevant to um, the type of content that you're shooting, right? For you to shoot, a three hundred or five hundred dollar video, and you get a five hundred dollar mic. It doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, make it if you already have 
you know, a shotgun mic, I would invest into buying the cord that I can run that mic straight into my camera. You know what I mean? Like what is gonna be the most cost effective way for you to use the gear that you have and then start building up. Then you shoot three or four or five, you know, three or five hundred dollar videos, then you buy a two hundred dollar mic. You know what I mean? Like that makes sense. But for you to be like go into debt or buy a mic that you're gonna buy a five hundred or three hundred dollar mic and then wait another month to shoot something, it doesn't make sense. Like save that money. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um that's another I like my list of questions. <laughs> um so like what what do you or what are your um goals for like the future of your business? Like or but yeah, where do you see the video videography industry kind of going in the next like ten years, five years? Um so I think there's this big shift that's gonna happen right now. Um and it's kind of funny because it's it's one of those things that's coming from a dying industry. So I laugh right now with like as heavily as influenced I am with Gary V that I do a lot of TV commercials, right? Because like I don't watch TV commercials. I hate watching TV commercials. I'm trying to watch something on TV. But what's going to happen now with the, at least what I think it's going to happen now with the rise of like on-demand networks like OTT is that when these networks are going to start allowing small businesses to advertise on them, I think there's going to be a lot more shift in demand for 30 second and 15 videos. Cause right now the biggest platform for small businesses is Facebook and Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, and you're making these six second videos or there's YouTube when Hulu allows, you know, my barber shop to run an ad in that area for what you know what he's doing that's going to open up the possibility for a lot of more people to be able to create content so i think that's going to be a big shift on what's going to happen with media um just what i've been watching like hulu literally just launched the program they're launching at the beginning of next year for agencies to be able to run ads on the hulu platform so What's next? You got Amazon, you're gonna have Disney Plus, Apple's gonna start releasing content. And mm -hmm. you know, they're, that's all you know, revenue generating. Like Facebook makes all its money out of ads. And what's gonna happen now, like Facebook already has so many people running ads on it, but now you're gonna have more possibilities to run ads on all these other networks. And they're gonna need people to create that content. Oh, nice. Um, Really good question. Um, so, like, is there anything, uh, or like, what do you think? Probably the best skills that you can have that someone who's wanting to go into this industry should have. Like, because I've heard that you know skills aren't important, but it's also about you know showing up on time and you know doing your job well, uh, you know things like that. Yeah. Well, it depends. It comes down to you know, what is it that you want to do? Because I have someone that I work with that all he wants to do is shoot. Like, you know I mean? If he could just shoot every day, he's like, you know, happy as he can be. For me, I want to grow my business. Like if I don't have to shoot, if I could just go out and, um, you know, get her to shoot direct, do, you know, creative direction, all that stuff. I'm really happy with that. So it's realizing like, what is it that you actually want to do? But it's one of those things in either way that you go is you need to be able to develop um, some sort of sales skills because, you know, I know plenty of people that have red cameras, but they can't get jobs. You can't get gigs. So if you're not developing and like, you know, if you're just watching how to shoot b-roll and how to make cinematic edits and stuff like that and you're not spending any time on youtube learning sales strategy learning e cold emailing learning all these things from different people you're not gonna last long in the business because like if you don't have sales you're not gonna have clients so like either way that doesn't work so spending a little bit of time on personal development for sales skills or developing clients, I think it's essential. But people hate, some people hate doing that, you know what I mean? But that's yeah. what you gotta figure out. If you really yeah. hate doing that, then you should probably go work for 
someone that you could do those type of productions for until you get comfortable enough where you build a clientele. Um, but like, it's, you know, it's huge. Yeah. So like what, like the niche that you're in is more, like, we're like doing a bit more like marketing, commercial type of work. Corporate, yeah. Um, yeah, corporate. Is there any other sort of like niche that you would want to um, start or get into or grow into? Or like maybe a niche that you see that's really beginning to explode or gain traction? <laughs> I mean, if I had to get into... So honestly, if I had to get into a whole other industry, it would move away, not move away from video itself, but it would be more on creating educational content, kind of something like what we're doing here today. Mm -hmm. uh, I just found that way more rewarding for myself. Uh, but I think like other industries, I think another industry, if someone was to specialize into doing anything today, I would become the freaking best vertical filmmaking, like vertical filmmaking out there. It's like the thing I would focus on. If I was a brand new person, I would start learning. I would be the guy that I can make your videos look fucking dope shooting vertically. Because that's going to translate into all the, all the platforms. You know, I don't think they're going to change the shape of a phone anytime soon. So if you could be the guy that's shooting really cool content in vertical format, I think that's something that's worth looking into. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, this has been great. Like, awesome. um, it's it's nice to just hear someone talk more about like the, the like actual business side, where like a lot of these I've um, gone on have been you know more about um, like the more video side, like the details, like oh, like you want to do like writing, uh, directing, or producing or video editing and directing. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to get more of like the actual business side where you're like, you're actually running a legit business. <laughs> so. Um, so what's the biggest thing you're struggling with right now? Like what are the, what are the things that you're trying to overcome? So right now it's, for me, it's really, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to kind of find like the direction that I want to go into. So I'm fine because I'm still kind of learning and I'm you know, looking at all these different sort of avenues and I'm like, what's something that I really feel like I'm attracted to um, in terms of what I want to shoot? And it's really mostly been like the mini docs, like the storytelling aspect that I really enjoy, that I like seeing. Um, and besides that would probably be me trying out like real estate video, videography be kind of interesting um but primarily it's probably more like interview based um video so do you actually want to shoot it or do you want to be like producing it being the person like asking the questions um i think i think like initially i would want to start out doing both but then transition to just like doing more of the questioning mm -hmm. kind of like having that sort of uh, rapport with you know the business owner or you know yeah whether so yeah i mean if i was you i'll i'll start hitting up production companies and uh up there in your area and just start peeing for them and kind of seeing how like because i've learned a lot from going working on bigger free shoots for people that are doing like bigger projects than me and being able to bring that to the scale of business that i'm doing but the other thing too like with me charging more, I try to do less on my shoots because like the thing is when you're doing interviews and you're doing the cameras and the lighting and doing the audio, it's a lot of things that you have to do and it really pulls away from the project. So the reason I was asking you that question is to figure yeah. out like if you really, if you want to make these mini docs, but you want to be more of like the interviewing like project vision, go collab with somebody that just wants to shoot and then work on something together and then, you know, kind of offer them the, the exact same thing for their project and start, you know, in a sense, bartering with each other. Uh, Cause it, it's going to make your life a little bit easier in that sense versus having to do everything. Like, you know, I'll go and shoot to where like, I'll literally make less money so I could have paid somebody to come and help me so I can have an easier day at the job. Yeah. I mean, that's, an excellent idea actually <laughs> it's awesome um 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, that's sort of like what I'm drawn into. Sorry about that. That was my cat. Okay. <laughs> my cats are kind of going nuts. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that, that sounds great. Oh. Um, I feel like I don't have any other questions right now. <laughs> oh, no worries. All good. Yeah. Um, Cool. Well, uh, let me know how it goes. I'll let's follow up with you. If you have more questions, you have an email, hit me up. I'll love to help. Okay. Then uh, I'll shoot you my buddy Rob's information. Oh, yeah, um, please. Like that, you know, because he's always out there trying to shoot. He was actually living in L.A. Then he moved back home because of the whole COVID thing. Right. Um, he's right. getting way more active and shooting and stuff like that. So, yeah. So. All right. All right. Uh, and where tell people where they can find you on social media, Instagram, if they want to come out and check you out and collab and all that. Oh yeah. Um, so I am on Twitter right now. My screen or my name is uh, Cara Forts on Twitter. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And if you got any questions, let me know. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for your time. You're Have welcome. a nice day. Bye.